So you guys may or may not recall a video I made earlier this year about how Sony and others don't seem to understand who the Switch's core audience is, and this was built off of comments obviously made by fans, but specifically that post was made because of comments made by Sony, which seemed to really miss the ideology of what the Switch's audience truly is. And now we have a report today. This was written by the Wall Street Journal, and... They're essentially saying that they interviewed all these indie developers who make mature games and say that Nintendo's attitude is completely switched. In fact, this is so interesting. I'm actually going to read a huge chunk of the article here because it goes to support what I stated earlier this year. And finally, this isn't just an opinion. This is some factual evidence from people who work with Nintendo. So here's what it says. Nintendo Company is encouraging some producers of violent or risque video games to provide content for its Switch console in an attempt to shed its image as a maker of devices just for families, software developers say. The software lineup for Switch includes Knights of Azure 2, Bride of the New Moon, an action role-playing game featuring lightly clothed female characters, Shinobi Refli, Senra Kagura, I'm sure I just butchered that, a game primarily for the Japanese market that allows players to massage young women, and Doom, a bloody shoot 'em up game. Developers say more titles for mature audiences are coming after Nintendo encouraged them to publish a wide range of games for the Switch. Inti Creators Company said last month it would release Gaia Gun 2, the Switch early next year in the US, Japan, and Europe. The company has released other titles in the series for PlayStation, Xbox, and personal computers. In the game, players try to hit young women with pheromone shots. Really interesting, the emphasis here on that stuff. Uh, Takuya Iozu, chief executive of NT Creates said he initially assumed Nintendo won't be interested in the game, but in discussions with the company, it welcomed the idea of bringing it to Switch. I thought it wouldn't be possible to release such a game for Switch, but surprisingly, Nintendo gave me positive feedback. Others mentioned Nintendo were passive about this in the past, but would be described differently today. Other software makers described a similar message. One executive and an outside developer said that when it came to risque or violent titles, Nintendo was passive until now, but that is no longer the right word to describe its stance today. Nintendo said games for its machines covered a variety of playing styles, genres, and ratings. As with books, televisions, and movies, different content is meant for different audiences. At a Switch presentation in January, the venue was enveloped in a nightclub-like atmosphere. Shinea Takahashi, a Nintendo executive, told the Wall Street Journal at the time the aim was to attract grown-up gamers in the West. DMM.com Group, a Japanese company whose products include games for smartphones and personal computers, said it chose Switch to release its first console game, Gal Metal. The game, for all ages, is about an all-girl high school band fighting against aliens with heavy metal performances. Nintendo has opened its windows to more developers, and it has gotten much kinder to companies new to Nintendo flat platforms, said Takayuki Fuji, the producer of Gal Metal. It is too soon to say whether the efforts are paying off. The Switch version of Knights of Azure Tour has sold 6,317 copies in Japan as of October 8th, since it was released in late August, according to video game magazine Famitsu. The U.S. release is in late October. An official at Koei Tecmo Holdings Company, the developer of the game, describes sales for the Switch version as not bad, although sales are higher for the PlayStation 4 version because more people own that machine. And there's more. There's a whole lot more in this article. I'm going to have it linked down below. You can go read it. Um, but there's one key phrase in there I, I really want to point out. Uh, this has to do with the January event. So, specifically, they said that they made the January event a nightclub-like atmosphere to attract older gamers in the West. Folks, that came from the horse's mouth of Nintendo. Nintendo Switch's core audience is adults and older gamers. Period. End of story. Now, that doesn't mean it's not, they don't have games for kids. You know, my daughter's very interested in getting the Switch. There are kids who love Switch. We all know about the Switch kid that we also reported on earlier. Uh, that doesn't mean 
that just because the core audience of a platform is this, that other, you know, other audiences for the platform can't exist. In fact, typically, and this is something I, I know from my own experience growing up and I've seen it with today's youth, if something is made for an older audience in the West specifically, the younger generation kind of wants it as well because it's viewed as cool and hip. Uh, that, that's why you see even some pop music today, some rap music, some of this uh, stuff that was intended for older audiences is starting to get really popular with the youth because they, their, their parents are listening to it. Uh, the young adults that are around, the college kids, are, they, you know, all these people that they think are cool listen to this music, so now they want to listen to it. Uh, so now that music, even if it's a little inappropriate, has started to become more acceptable at the youth age. And the same is true of video games. I mean, Call of Duty, I think the primary audience of Call of Duty is still adults. I mean, the game is rated mature, but there's there's no secret a lot of kids also play Call of Duty, and that's because they see adults playing it and think it's cool. So, yeah, this is very interesting to me. Because before it was it was a theory, right? When I said that Sony didn't understand, and when a lot of gamers didn't understand the core audience of Nintendo Switch, a lot of it was based on my ideology of the appeal of the system, both to me as someone in my 30s, and both to people even younger than me, uh, based on Nintendo's own actions, right? Everything they have shown about the Switch at that point felt to me like it was catered towards adults. Every single commercial was literally young adults and college students playing Switch in a variety of situations that maybe we're not going to do in real life, like how many of us are going to meet up before class in the classroom, bust out our Switches and play some Mario Kart. I don't know. Maybe it does happen. I don't. I, I take college classes online, so I, I, I have a hard time remembering uh, what class was even like in person. I remember playing some video games on my laptop when I was in college. But, uh, yeah, it's... It's interesting to me just thinking about that dynamic that I brought up back then. All the points I made about the commercials, about the lead game for the, for it being Breath of the Wild and how Breath of the Wild had this appeal factor that was heavily catered towards young adults and experienced gamers. Uh, that doesn't mean that the younger generation doesn't want to play it. As, as I pointed out, the fact that so many young adults want to play it actually makes it more attractive to the younger generation. Nintendo realized something over the years with Switch, and that is that in the West, if you want to be popular both with the youth and with gamers, you just need to cater to gamers, and the youth will tag along for the ride. That's kind of how it goes. Uh, so Nintendo realized this in the West, and really everything's been catered towards. I mean, forget some of these games. Some of these games feel a little crude. Uh, you know, you could argue even sexist, possibly. I mean, you know, especially those games. In, the, in Japan, they kind of have different cultural things. So, like, these games are a heck of a lot more accepted in Japan than in the United States. But whatever. Reality is that Switch is for young adults. We we just heard it. This was this has never been stated publicly by Nintendo. Uh, they keep saying they're a for everyone company. They make games for everyone. It's the same kind of thing they've been they've been beaten into our heads for thirty years, right? They, they don't they don't ever want to feel like they're excluding anyone from their platform. But it's very clear, and this comes from a Nintendo rep that. Everything about the marketing, everything about the game releases, everything about the way they are presenting games. I mean, when they just dropped Doom and dropped Wolfenstein 2 on us in that last Nintendo Direct, that was very purposeful. And they gave decent time to it because they realized at that point, you know, they had shown some neat games, but, the, the, you know, maybe it wouldn't hit with the audience they want. And then, boom, here's Doom. Here's this. Um, Nintendo was very intentionally... Speaking to an audience for Switch that we all just need to admit is the case. Uh, there were some people who were in denial back then. There's still going to be people in denial because the system doesn't appeal to them. And that's okay. Not every system is going to appeal to every person. If that was the case, each the Switch would already have sold like 100 million units. PlayStation 4 would sell a billion units. Uh, it's just not the case. There's no system that appeals to every person who wants to play games. That's why there are. That, that, that's why variety is actually good because it caters to different you know tastes out there. But... Man, Nintendo, thank you. Indie developers, thank you. Everyone, thank you so much. Wall Street Journal, while I don't always agree with stuff you do and stuff you say, thank you for this insight because it feels good to know that when I made these statements earlier this year, that I'm, I was apparently correct. Nintendo's goal with the Switch, especially in the West, is to have an audience of young adult gamers. 
or adult gamers, experienced gamers, whatever negative connotations you want to attach to the word gamer, anyone who's basically over 18 or has a lot of experience playing video games, that's what who they are targeting with Switch. That just makes me so excited for the future of Switch, uh, the future of third-party support on Switch, the future of the type of indie games we're going to get on Switch. I mean, we've been getting some pretty hardcore indie games as well. I mean, we can't just forget that that hasn't been happening this whole time. Uh, Nintendo's been giving us the goods. They've been working with companies that are continuing to also give us the goods, whether it's indie or AAA like Bethesda. And all I have to do is say thank you, Nintendo. Thank you, Nintendo. For the first time, I can really say since the Super Nintendo back in the day, you're truly back. You're truly back to recognizing who your core audience should be and how you can use that core audience to actually expand to a younger generation. Thank you. This is Nathaniel Ruffledance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content, and I will catch you in the next one.